Mike Stratton, um, boss man of Tenant Serve. Um, why do letting agents serve the wrong Section 8 notice? Talk to me. <laughs> I don't think they intentionally serve the wrong notice. Okay. But it happens. And generally speaking, it's just through a lack of knowledge on the process. And a Section 8 has many grounds, um, some mandatory, some not. And it's picking which ones to use. That's why always the default is a Section 21. So if you can go that route, it's the safest. But a Section 8 on certain grounds. So I'll give you an example on an antisocial behaviour. Okay, so we have a, an HMO. There's a tenant in there um, destroying the property daily. Um, what can you do? Well, the first thing we, that we always say then is get a, a police uh, number. So if you've got a crime reference number, get that one in the bag. Then do witness statements of everyone involved. Put a witness statement together for yourself. Then approach us. We'll, we'll draft it through and we'll serve that uh, antisocial behaviour uh, notice. That is the dodgiest one out of the lot because you need more evidence than everybody thinks. So that, I would suggest, for, is, the, is the top of it. The other one is, is uh, when a, a tenant's in um, serious debt. What do you call, how many months do you call serious debt? To, to serve a Section 8, you have to be over two clear months okay. anyway. Yeah, but then serious the debt. But then the buggers keep paying <laughs> 20 quid here. And... <laughs> they do. So hence again, serve a 21 alongside, and we can always revert back to the 21. But the, the Section 8 for non-payment of rent, I have, and even last week, I had someone come in, £22,000 rent arrears. How okay? many months is that? That's on 14 Four months. Wow. Why would you leave it 14 months? That's a different uh, conversation. So the agent has to decide what grounds he's going to go on, how quick the notice can be. Do they know the difference between a two-month notice and the amount of arrears there for 14 months? You know, it's quicker. That's where we, that's where we really, they should, should we do some homework on there. There's a lot of very, very knowledgeable agents out there. I take my hat off to them. All are qualified, you know, they, and they go back, they check. Um, but there's always that little element there, you know, of, of doubt. And so that's when you should make sure that you've got professional advice. Okay, but w w again, surely you'd use the, the late payment of rent on the fact it's 14 months, or is there something else you would use? You could do, depending if they're in breach of their contract. Um, there might be other grounds in there. And you can add them in, but you have to have the meat in the main one. That's going to be your, that's going to be the one we're going to go for. The others are just... What are the side. ones, which are the ones are good to have as long as the evidence is there? Yeah, it's it usually a breach of contract um, is, is a, it's a very good one. Um, it can be even something where they've um, damaged the property. So there's structural damage, um, damage to um, the outside, not kept the outside as it was, and then the, the, the ivy's grown up and it's damaging the brickwork. There's quite a few there. But then that's down to inspections. A lot of it, you know, if you keep your inspections up, you can cover your bases, and then you have evidence of what's gone on. So again, if you're going to use that route, big tip for agents, make sure that you have evidence that evidence. Oh, your yeah. ivy, your ivy, cut, cut your ivy. If you keep telling them, you've got... You can use that as a you ground, can. but if you just let it go for two years, yes, that's then, tough. Then, then what you were saying is, well, we're aware of that, but hey, you know, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, you need evidence that it does matter, and you're going to enforce that. Let's just nip just quickly to section 21 and um, the registering of deposits. There's just still a lot of letting agents that are getting their their fingers burnt on that. I'm smiling because I have to. It's a laugh because every single week there is an unprotected deposit, even now. And everyone's shouted about it. We're way down the line here now, you know, and I have a landlord come and say, ah, the biggest issue I've got, I've not protected the... And I have to then tell them to return it, and the risk is still there that they can still get prosecuted, you know, but they need to return it to that tenant, even though they owe money, even though they're doing damage. And the, the language used by some of the, lang the, 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 the landlords is... is Right. So you have to return the deposit back and potentially you still could get fined. Yes, you can. And the only way that the tenant's going to work that one out is if they go on the internet or talk to a charity. And the vast majority do. You, they're only going to go on the phone and they find out. And, and, they, and they use that then as, a, as a, either a delaying, a negotiating tactic, you know. But every, every single week, someone has not returned that deposit. And if the deposit, even if the money gets sent back, 
and they're say for six months in advance in arrears sorry they can still serve a section eight can they yeah of course you can it, it, what i always suggest to them is is return the deposit and ask for it to be taken in as part of the the rent arrears so that, that at least the landlord's getting money back you know and it's it's there but you have to have consent it has to be done by consent interesting thank you for your time today thank christopher